Ah, oh, Mr. Holmes, we have a slight problem. What happened? One of the suspects, Mr. Reginald Butcher, has escaped. It was after we asked him to put his belongings in the evidence room. I'm sorry. How did he escape? Um, he hit me in the face. Took me by surprise, you know, otherwise I, uh... Of course. That's all? Just before he left the yard, he shouted, Sorry, I'll come back later. Sorry, I'll come back later. He could have said that without punching me. Is Inspector Lestrade here? No, he will be absent for a couple of days. Can we keep this incident between us? This pen is an expensive one, but it isn't new. Reginald Butcher is fond of sweets. Reginald Butcher had problems with his job. The initials M.B. This letter from yesterday perhaps explains why Butcher was in such a hurry. At any rate, I now have an exact address. Murad. Quite a popular brand of cigarette. Whiskey. Of poor quality. Thick leather gloves. They're probably insulated. My life has changed thanks to Pastor Gordon and my faith. A book. Karl Heinzen's 1848 De Maud, with a bookmark. This terrible passage is apparently appreciated by Garrett. Electrical wires. The belongings of the victims, Rasco and his acolyte. A normal pocket knife. A standard deck of playing cards. Rasco is fond of licorice. Huh. The licorice was found both at the sewers and amongst Rasco's belongings. A Webley revolver. A police report about Rasco. He's only a minor criminal. Please, escort this suspect for interrogation. Good day to you. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I am assisting the police with their investigation. I'm Benjamin Fowler, and I was arrested by mistake. I swear it. You have not been arrested, Mr. Fowler. You are here as a witness. Oh, but I saw nothing. I swear. Let me go. Could you tell me what you were doing at the scene of the accident? I was working on the square's statue. I work for the council, I swear it. Do you ever work with electricity? Yes, sometimes. I repair electric lamp posts, but I'm not a specialist. I swear it. It's new, isn't it? And complex, and dangerous. I understand. 
Mr. Holmes. I know you're a great detective and you understand me, so please let me go. I know nothing. I swear... Yes, you swear it. I know. Mr. Fowler, does the name Rasco ring any bells with you? First time I ever heard it. I swear. But your tattoo resembles his. You are in his gang, are you not? Um, um... Uh, no. It, it was a long time ago. I already forgot. I swear it. I just picked a few pockets for him when I was a young fellow. But I ain't proud of what I did. All my family, my parents, my brothers, dogs and cats all died when I was a lad. I wouldn't have survived otherwise. Please, escort this suspect for interrogation. Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Thomas Garrett. Why am I here? <coughs> you are a witness to murder. Of course. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that the police jailed an innocent man in order to close a case. No one has been charged yet. Yet. Did you perhaps see anything in particular during or after this disaster? Yes. I saw part of your bourgeoisie burn up and explode. It was spectacular. Why did you remain in the square? Why not seek shelter? Like the rest of the sheep. There were some wounded comrades, workers. I wanted to help them. You have a severe cough. Are you suffering? It's only a cold. <coughs> Why not be honest with me? You are spitting up black fluid. Ah, well observed. Yes, I have enough coal dust in my lungs to fuel an entire London district. You were a miner then? Since the age of 13, yes. At the Newcastle Mines. 15 years of hell. Those were bloody times. But now it's over. I don't want to die in those holes like my father and my brothers did, in order to line the pockets of the rich. <coughs> Do you have any electrical knowledge? How do you know about that? Are you a mind reader? <coughs> there are electrical wires amongst your belongings. Clever. Yes, I teach electrics to my comrades, since I'm currently without paid work. I'm self-taught, so we're not as dumb as you might think. And I don't want to work for bosses anyway. I'm apparently in the children's ward. I'm apparently in the children's ward. Meryl Butcher. Admission file at Karolinska University Hospital in Stockholm. A young woman lost her life. Mr. Butcher's wife. Mr. Reginald Butcher, I come from Scotland Yard. Might we talk? All right, but not too loudly. She's finally asleep. Is she your daughter? My pretty little Meryl. She's very ill. Now look, I'm sorry I ran, but I had to see Dr. Blowberry today and the policeman wouldn't listen. Don't worry, I understand now.
Can she be cured? It'll take a long time. But I'm confident that we'll win this fight. I can't bear to think otherwise. Yes. Probably just a question of money. What are you talking about? It's a question of willpower, and my daughter will win. I do hope so. Although the treatment at the Karolinska University Hospital is very expensive. Ah, um... Yeah, it's our only hope. Thanks to the good Dr. Blowberry, she finally has a bed. We're going out next week. It's our last chance. Do you have children? Yes. I have a daughter too. We'd sacrifice our lives for our children, would we not? Yes. Of course, yes. What do you do for a living, Mr. Butcher? I... I work at the office of the Underground Electric Railways Company. Then you must be familiar with electrical devices. I am indeed. Why do you ask? It is of no consequence, but tell me, what are the reasons behind the problems you are experiencing at work? Problems? What do you mean? You have already received a written warning. Yes. I'm often late to work. My boss doesn't understand my situation. It's difficult since my daughter became ill. I see. Coincidentally, we found one of your company's cabs in the square where the accident occurred. Really? Why was it there? I have no idea. Do you? No. But a week ago we had a technical cab stolen, along with its tools. Do you think that could be the one? It's possible. 